Okay, step two, learning FTP so that we can actually upload stuff to our website. That's what we're going to do now. Now, we did suggest on the Moji Crew resources page, if you remember that, it was moji-crew.com. Okay, and you scroll down, you see that resources link right here. And if you go there, there's a link for FileZilla. It's free. It's called the FileZilla client. They have a FileZilla server and a FileZilla client. Now, a FileZilla server is a way of making your computer into a website host, but it's really not recommended. FileZilla client is a regular FTP client. FTP means file transfer protocol. Protocol is just a, another way to say communication method. File transfer is the whole idea to transfer files from your computer to the website, from the website to your computer, to allow someone else to transfer files to the same website, uh, up and down, you know, from their computer to the site, from the site to their computer. So you can use FTP to upload files to your website and then let a friend download them from your website or anything like that or a partner somebody working with you so file transfer protocol is just how you connect to your website to put stuff on it that you had on your computer so things in your computer you can stick on the website and make them visible now I personally don't use FileZilla I use another one called 3D FTP which you can find this way if you go to 3D FTP three-dimensional FTP 3D FTP.com Okay. Then they have all these different things you can take a look at. And if you just, for 3D FTP, if you hit learn more, then it tells you about 3D FTP and you can download the free trial. And it shows you all of these sync products. You don't want those. What you want is this one down here. Download 3D FTP. Start the download. I think the trial runs for 30 days, uh, something like that. And then I think to buy it, it's something like 50 bucks. I bought mine once several years ago. Oh, it's 40 bucks. I bought mine once several years ago. I still use it now. I'm completely content with it. <laughs> so it's certainly worth the price. Okay. And so there's that. Now, having said that, if you do want to get the FileZilla for free, you just want to make sure you know how to how to use it. And a very, very easy way to do that is to go to youtube.com and type in something like this, how to use FileZilla uh, client. Remember, not the server, the client. Now, all these things will do it. This one says FTP client here. That's the one. This is also the free FTP client, FTP client, FTP client, FTP client. So you're good to go. Any of these things will show you what you need to know to use FTP. It's a piece of cake. So in my case, I'm just going to show you with 3D FTP because that's what I like to use. And you can follow along. It's all pretty much the same. It's the same stuff you fill out, the same actions. The windows look the same. There's not much different. All right, so let's see. What do I need to do now? I need to create an FTP connection to that very website we just created. So remember, our website is building-websites-today.com. So let's do a connection. So under the connect box, I'm going to hit new because I want to create a new connection. I have a lot of websites here, different things that are here, lots of websites. I just want to create a new one. And on this one, what do I need? I need the site name. This is just for my own reference. This isn't something that you have to worry about. It's just whatever I want to call it so I can find it fast. Building websites today. That way I know what it is. What is the host address? Remember how I said ftp.building-websites-today.com. Okay. Instead of www. In this case, do not use www. Use FTP. Now, we do not want to log in anonymously we need a username and a password because you cannot log in anonymously it'll just say you cannot do that so here's the username that we got from our host monster account it's the same username and the same pass that we used to create our host monster account it's going to be the same pass here wonderfully it's all the same okay port 21 don't worry about it that's the default you're always going to leave it 21 on filezilla It'll probably be 21. If it says port and it's blank on FileZilla, type in 21. Okay? I don't use it, so I, 
I forget whether they have that or not. Now you have it. It's right there. Building websites today. And so I can either hit connect or I can just double click the website I want like that. And here it is. I see it. Now, where are all of your web pages going to go? They do not go just in here. This is all the main backup supporting files and everything for different stuff. There's FTP info, mail, etc., Mozilla, password, cPanel, temp. What your website is going to be in is this folder called public HTML. That should make sense. HTML pages, whether it's WordPress, Joomla, or strict HTML, it's all HTML anyway. And HTML pages is what Google uses to understand the entire internet and, and what they're displaying all the time. So public HTML just means the public can view your HTML pages. Now, if you have an account, whoops, that's the wrong place. Okay, if you, I, I accidentally clicked temp, public HTML. Now, if you got a hosting account somewhere else like HostGator, they're all pretty much the same prices. It's just some people already have websites up. Um, then it may be called public HTML. It might be called something else. It could be called website. It could be called pages. It could be called web pages. It could be called home or web. Okay, so just so you understand that one of those folders, when you first log in into the root, uh, we're assuming that this is going to be the root of our website. Okay, public HTML. For host monster, it's always going to be public HTML every time you create a new website. So it's always that way. Now, there's really nothing here. There's just a default HTML and a few backup supporting files, and that's pretty much it. And the default HTML is what it's going to show until you actually create a website here. Now, what are we seeing? Just to step back and look at this. There is my computer is this entire window on the left. This is all the stuff on my computer. See how it says C users owner desktop. That's my computer. I can go up by double clicking this icon up here with the two dots, the top one. If I double click it, boom, boom, it goes up. That takes me to C users owner. I can go up again. I can go up again. That's my C drive with my program files and program files x86. It's all here. And um, I can go down to users again, and I can go into owner, and I can go to desktop, and I'm right back at my desktop. Okay, so that's really how it works. And if I go into any one of these, I can eventually see, you know, the files that I'm after, different things that we've done over the course of time. So all my files are here. Now, what you did was install the Moji sample site in your C drive under a folder called moji demo and in there is a v2 and in the v2 is a folder called open and read me and if we click it we have these things to upload to the root of our website that is right into the public html folder this is all the images banners and things like that everything the css files the things that make your website look right when you put up pages pages like these so how does this work and how does this look right now? Okay, here, let's just show you because this is easy and this is just so you can understand the process better. If I go right now and I haven't uploaded anything yet, but if I just go to the default, what's there right now? There's nothing there. See, it just basically says, okay, it's connected to host monster, but no one put anything here. So it put up a default page. Often you see, see this. Okay. So what do I do now? I say, what if I upload a, an index.html? If you have an index.html inside your public underscore HTML folder, then it's going to be the new default because that's what's looked for first by the browser. It's really looking for a page called slash index.html up here, okay? But that is what the main page of a website is already. It's the same thing. So it doesn't matter whether you type it in or not. It's supposed to go to index.html. If there is no index.html, then it tries to find index.php. If it can't find that, it sticks with that default.html because it's the only thing left it can find. There's actually more choices. There's index.htm, which also takes precedence, 
but still index.html is the one it's going to look for first so now let's go okay and it shows the dummy page I created just a dummy page and I can replace it with any other web page now that I call index.html and here's just some simple little notes it's just a dummy page that's exactly what I put in that index file if I want I can right click and view it in Windows Explorer on my own computer and it's showing me the same thing okay so that's the same page this is just so you understand what's going on close other tabs now if I want to see an example of a page that should look right, I can upload this. And here's where I'm going to point out again that difference. Okay, building-websites-today.com slash index.html is that file. That is the default one that you're supposed to see if you're going to see anything. Okay, if, if you type something in that does not exist, it'll just be a broken link, right? It won't default anywhere. It'll just say, hey, it's a broken link and then fill in the silly filler page, okay? There is no index2.html, but I did just put up something else. And the last thing I wanna say before that is everything is cap sensitive. Watch this. If I go here, I can rename this thing, rename. And if I do that, maybe I'll make a capital I now it's got a capital I for index. Always beware of caps. Don't use caps as a matter of fact, because now if I go to index.html and refresh it, remember to watch out for cookies, right? That me, otherwise you think the page is there when it's really not. Refresh it, okay? You can see it's broken. If I replace the small i with a capital I, then there it is, okay? So always be aware of things like that. This is why simple rules never use capitals that's why everything is lowercase all the time when you're searching google and you see all these keywords are lowercase don't use caps and don't use spaces right always use dashes or underscores never spaces and links there shouldn't be a space here it shouldn't be example number three you should never see it like this example space number space three it should never be like that ever it should always be with dashes or underscores something but it should never have spaces just so you know okay now again we don't have to do this our website is done for us we're just showing you how this works so you can see how to use FTP that's all so I do have an example.html and again with a capital I if I refresh now it's broken if I switch back to a small I there it is right I can refresh it and make sure let's try our example.html This is just an example of one of those pages that when we upload, this is how it would look. Now, right now, the difficulty with this page is it's reading all the information from some other website for the CSS files and everything else. We, and so every picture on here is coming from some other website. Whoops, that's the link. I need to actually snatch a picture and look at the properties to show you. The image comes from another website. Now, in our case, we like all of our images and everything to come from our own website. It's better for Google. So here's how you do that. See that folder? Just upload it to your root, the public underscore HTML. This is the only time you're going to have to upload this thing. And the reason it has such a weird name is so that everything you do with these projects works around anything else you ever want to put on a website. Okay, so if you really have a website already, or if you're going to put up a website that really sells something, but you still want to keep all your projects, then you won't, you won't get mixed up with the images and CSS files won't be overwritten. All of this is kept in a separate container here. So these will not merge with any images that you have in your root. Banners won't merge with banners you have in your root. Nothing gets mixed up. Everything pertaining to the Moji placeholder website, the whole thing we're doing here with the backlinking is inside that folder, okay? So that's really, really cool, all right? So there you go. This is FTP and how you prep it for what we're going to do next, all right? That's pretty much it. I can disconnect, close, open. Whoops, always opens my other window. I can connect 
and connect to this new website I just created. I can go into my public folder, refresh it just to make sure I see everything. Sometimes you'll upload something and you won't see it until you hit the refresh button. Usually when you download it, you will see it, but if you don't, hit the refresh button, that kind of thing. If you need to create a new folder like images, and then inside the folder, you're going to put a bunch of stuff. You want to upload it here, just right click it and upload it. Okay. And then now you have a copy over here. Okay. And in my case, I'm going to delete it. So I know I haven't actually put anything in there yet because I haven't. See how you can delete things. By the way, you can upload a lot of things at once. You can hold down your control key or your shift key and just highlight a whole bunch of things you can upload and it'll ask you, wait a minute, these things exist. Do you want to override them? And you can decide skip, overwrite, resume or rename. So if you overwrite, it just recreates them. Piece of cake. So it just overwrites. That way you can make changes on your computer to files that already exist and then just upload them to overwrite. Nice, simple piece of cake. And I could reconnect. It keeps popping off. That's no issue. It's a reconnect. It always auto reconnects on its own, usually after a delay anyway. But it's there. And I can hit refresh. And I know it's all set up. So I'm done. I've got my whole website set up. All I really had to do was connect it up. Okay. I just did this. And then what did I do? I went to where my folder stuff is, this open and readme folder, and uploaded this thing and just uploaded these and made sure I could see pages and now I'm all done. Okay, that's all done. Piece of cake. Easy enough to deal with. So let me go ahead and disconnect and close. Now we're on to the next step which is creating our massive website. After that we're gonna submit the sitemaps to Google and we're done. So this is how far along we are now. Alright, I'll go ahead and break off here and we'll continue on with the next lesson.